Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip? Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello, Magic players. I'm Jumbo Commander, and this video features budget win conditions. I'm going to talk about all of the great cards that let you win at Commander, all on a budget. I'm aiming for right around $2. And the reason and the inspiration for this video is my three-part series about super budget commander staples, where I talked about all sorts of cards that are awesome in commander, all for under 25 cents. And in these videos, I've given away all of these super budget staples. And so I'd like to announce three more winners, Timothy, Wesley, and Lightcore. Thank you so much for commenting, liking, subscribing. Congratulations. I'm going to send you guys out some awesome super budget staples. And I'm actually going to start shipping out everyone's super budget staples. So the people that won weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ago on the very first video, congratulations. Yours will finally be in the mail. And I mentioned that you can't just buy 25 cent cards very easily online. You kind of need to have a little bit of a higher threshold to make it worth a stamp. And so every person that won is going to get some cards from this video as well. And this video is featuring budget win conditions. What is a win condition? Well, you want to have cards that are impactful enough that push your strategy over the top, that can let you win the game or threaten winning the game in a single card. So let's jump right into maybe one of the most famous win conditions out there, and that's Craterhoof Behemoth. The reason why Craterhoof Behemoth is so powerful is that he pumps your whole team, gives them trample, and has haste itself. But coming in at $12 and being kind of a boring win condition because he's so good and so prolific, maybe might not want to play him. So let's instead look at Beastmaster's Ascension and Pathbreaker Ibex and find out how they compare to the hoof. While Beastmaster's Ascension can sometimes buff things even more, and it's fast, you can drop Beastmaster's Ascension and then swing all out, putting all the counters on it and buffing your whole team. But it's missing that very important trample. Pathbreaker Ibex makes up for that. But coming in at 220, it technically breaks our $2 rule. I found a few online for under $2 a little bit, but to be fair, it's got to be the 220 mark. It gives it trample, but you have to wait a whole extra turn unless you have a way to give your Pathbreaker Ibex haste. But I feel like these two together make much more unique win conditions than Crater Hoof Behemoth. But these cards go over the top, trying to get bigger than your opponents and trample over. What if you just evade your opponents? I personally really like the flexibility of Cryptic Command, being able to tap down all creatures your opponent's controls. That locks down the entire board. And Cryptic Command is so flexible, being able to bounce and draw. I mean, it's such a good card, but at $24, outside of a lot of price ranges, and at blue, 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 a lot of mana bases too. So let's consider Champion of Lamhold and Archetype of Imagination. Both of these cards give awesome evasion, almost making your whole team unblockable. There are a lot of falter effects out there, but I really like the price of Archetype of Imagination, and I like the counter synergy of Champion of Lamphold. So you might have noticed that these cards don't always win the game on their own. Even Crater Hoof Behemoth needs some other support to go over the top. This next category helps put you over the top no matter what your strategy is, and that's big mana. And I think that most big mana strategies can be summed up by cards like Cabal Coffers or Gaia's Cradle, giving you a tremendous amount of mana in order to just go over the top of your opponents and really win the game. Because these mana advantages are so big, so quick, sometimes your opponents just can't recover. I believe that these lands are way more powerful than other traditional big mana cards. I have Cage Sun listed here, but there are a lot of other cards that double your mana and make things huge. And they all have their place, but these lands are so powerful because they're hard to interact with and they're explosive. I mean, they're really hard to interact with because they're lands, but also you can use them immediately. The Cage Sun, you have to pay six for, and then sometimes wait a whole cycle of the table in order to finally use all of that mana. That's why I've decided that my big mana card for this series has got to be Mana Geyser. 
oh my gosh, does this card go over the top. Three red red for a sorcery that says, add one red to your mana pool for each tapped land your opponents control. This is big mana right here. You can use this for so many different things and it goes over the top almost better than these other lands and certainly better than these mana doublers that are a turn too slow. And with mana geyser costing 13 cents. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So what are we gonna do with all of this mana? Well, you can do all sorts of things, but my next category is kind of a place for big mana. And it's one of my favorite places. <laughs> and that's Genesis Wave. But Genesis Wave is $4. I mean, it's amazing. You get to play all the cards that make your deck your deck. I love Genesis Wave. $4 though, I think it's worth it. And by the way, this $4 price tag is from Iconic Masters. So you should pick these up at $4 if you can. Maybe they'll dip a little bit down, but get some for your commander decks. I think it's worth that price. But if you want to go budget, you can't do any better than Villainous Wealth. 30 cents for a card that really does go over the top and lets you mess with your opponent's deck. I love it. Winning with your opponent's cards is so much fun, so satisfying. But if I'm talking about expels and budget win conditions, I have to throw in just a mention for Exsanguinate. At $2, this card really does do a good job finishing out the game. I personally am kind of dismissive of Exsanguinate because it feels like the Crater Hoof Behemoth, where, oh, you just Exsanguinated, yay, you won the game, Ooh, okay. But Villainous Wealth, that's an exciting way to win the game. Next up is my army in a can strategy where basically you can create a whole army out of a single card. There are a lot of cards out there that just pump out armies, but I think some of the classics have to be Avenger of Zendikar and Monastery Mentor that kind of encapsulate two different strategies. Avenger of Zendikar goes really wide with plant tokens, and then as you play lands, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And after a couple turns, this army can get out of control. Monastery Mentor does something similar, where when you cast non-creature spells, you can create these monks, and with prowess, you can also get them bigger and bigger and bigger. Both of them require a few hoops to jump through, and both of them are a little bit expensive, but I think what they do is something I like when it comes to armies and cans, which is they can also grow their army. That's also why I really like Dragon Broodmother. It's awesome. It's a little bit narrow, which is why I didn't headline it, but I like this card way better than the others. Two red, 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 green for a 4-4 flying dragon and the beginning of each upkeep. Ooh, I love each upkeep in multiplayer games, but the beginning of each upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one red, green uh, flying dragon creature token with Devour 2. Devour 2 lets you eat other creatures on the battlefield to make that dragon bigger. And by pumping out lots and lots of little 1-1s, one you can devour them later and make big dragons. I love it. So the devour mechanic had me thinking of Michaeloth, which is a budget army in a can. As long as you have the setup cost of being able to devour something when Michaeloth comes into play, you can pump out so many sapperlings. But Michaeloth is not able to pump them up on its own. It just goes super, super wide. It can get out of control, but it takes too many turns. I don't know, it's not the true army in a can. That's why I think I'm gonna lean a little bit heavier on Docent of Perfection. This card puts out 1-1 one, one wizards, but when you flip it, then they become 3-2 flying wizards. Now that's a real threat. And cheaper than all these other cards here, 45 cents. Docent of Perfection, then Final Iteration, gets my stamp of approval for an awesome army in a can for a Spellslinger deck. Now there's another way to create an army out of nowhere, and that's through Super Clones. I think Rite of Replication ends a lot of games, and it's just above our budget at 250. But again, it's a little bit boring. I prefer Stolen Identity, one of my favorite cards. Sure, you get a token for six mana, not that great of a deal, but then you get to cipher. This spell kind of like enchants another creature, and if you can get in for combat damage, you can cast Stolen Identity again, making another creature token. And so sometimes Stolen Identity gets you two creature tokens the first turn you cast it, and then maybe another token every other turn as you're getting in combat damage. That's a super fun and interesting clone, and at 35 cents, it's a deal you can't beat. 
but if you want something a little bit more reliable than trying to get in combat damage, I'd suggest Progenitor Mimic. Coming in at $2, it's a pretty budget card, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you just get a copy of whatever the Progenitor Mimic cloned. Another classic win condition has to be Insurrection in Red. You just steal all the creatures and you attack all your opponents. Except for it's $6.50 and again a little bit boring. I could suggest Mob Rule and at 15 cents it might be worth it for you, but it's a little bit unreliable for me. I don't like it even at that price. But I have found great enjoyment, I would say Euphoria, in playing Disrupt Decorum. I know it's $2.20, it's a little bit above the budget, but it's from the new Commander set, and they're releasing more and more of them, I think the price will go down a little bit. But Disrupt Decorum is 2 red red for sorcery, goad all creatures you don't control. Oh, it's majestic! They all have to attack your opponent, your opponents all attack each other, and as you go around the table, opponents will leave themselves empty to more and more attacks, and by the time it's your turn, you basically have a board full of tapped creatures and you can go around finishing people off. Oh my gosh, Disrupt Decorum is hilarious and amazing and political and chaotic and could generate the same results as an Insurrection. I really, really like it and I'm really hoping that the price dips down a little bit so everyone can buy this and cause chaos at their commander tables. Hopefully I addressed all the big hitters, Craterhoof, Exsanguinate, Insurrection, and now we have Rise of the Dark Realms. I've seen this card threaten to end games so many times, but at 9 mana it's a little bit slow and at $9 it's a little bit out of budget. So how about we raise some zombies? For $2 and 8 mana we can get 13 Tutu Black Zombies. Now this should be the card that embodies army in a can. It literally has army in the name, it's spectacular. But if we're more interested in abusing our opponent's creatures, how about Grave Betrayal? It's an enchantment that won't let your opponent's creatures die, you get them back on your side of the battlefield. And for some reason they get a plus one plus one counter? Okay, that sounds great to me. So if you've seen some of these splashy expensive cards end games, First off, recognize that they're boring. <laughs> Everyone knows about these expensive cards that win a lot of stuff. But also, you can have your own versions on a budget. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm branching out to doing a lot of different types of videos in celebration of my Patreon launch. Go ahead and check out my Patreon. I'm super excited to have lots of goals and rewards. and. Part of it is showcasing different types of videos I can make and expanding to make more content for all of you. So if you like videos like this, please like it. <laughs> you could also leave a comment below, but go ahead and take a look at Patreon and see if it's your kind of thing. I'm also going to be giving away one of each of these awesome budget win conditions to one of my patrons. All right, everyone, this is Jumbo Commander, and there are going to be a lot of really cool videos this week. And hopefully if my Patreon goes well, even more in the weeks and weeks and months to come. I'm super excited to see you guys real soon.